Union flag previously hoisted above many of Scotland's best-known public sites. Scottish Government will only allow it to be used on one day, Remembrance Day. Patriotic officials wanting to fly flag will have to ask Miss Sturgeon in advance. Nicola Sturgeon was accused of snubbing the Queen last night after an extraordinary bid to eradicate the Union flag in Scotland. In an incendiary move, the SNP government ruled that the Union flag should no longer be raised for the Queen's birthday at dozens of public buildings in Scotland. The Union flag has previously been hoisted above many of Scotland's best-known public buildings, historical sites and visitor attractions 15 days a year to commemorate key royal birthdays and anniversaries. But the Scottish Government has now moved to change the rules and only allow it to be used on one day a year, Remembrance Day. Patriotic officials wanting to fly the Union flag were warned they would need Miss Sturgeon's permission in advance. The decision, ratified by the First Minister, was last night branded churlish and stupid by royal experts. It means that the Union flag will now rarely be seen at some of Scotland's most famous buildings. Among the sites which will be affected by the new policy will be the High Courts of Edinburgh and Glasgow, offices of the Scottish Government and other Quangos and 30 key historic sites including Linlithgow Palace, the birthplace of Mary, Queen of Scots. By contrast, the rainbow flag, the symbol of the gay community, will be flown on four days a year. Scottish Conservative MSP Myrtle Fraser said, Nicola Sturgeon's always keen to stress that her civic nationalism is nothing to do with flags and banners. Yet here we have her trying to eradicate the Union flag from government buildings in Scotland. This is just another example of the SNP government pushing its separatist agenda by stealth. Refusing to fly the Union flag on the Queen's birthday is something that may well appeal to the extreme elements of the nationalist movement. But ordinary members of the public will be altogether less convinced. Dickie Arbiter, the Queen's former press secretary, said the royal family would take the decision in their stride. But he added, on a personal note I think it is churlish. I'm not sure it is anti-monarchy, it seems a swipe at Downing Street and at the Union rather than the monarchy as such. Nicola Sturgeon has made clear her feelings about the Union and Scottish independence. But I think it is a daft idea on the part of the Scottish government. It would take a rocket scientist to dig up the way the Scottish government thinks. It is a stupid idea and very churlish but it won't stop people in the private sector from marking the Queen's birthday with the Union flag. Pamela Nash, chief executive of Scotland in Union, said, It's extraordinary the Scottish government can find the time, with the NHS under pressure, standards in schools slumping and the economy underperforming the rest of the UK, to spend time and resources revising their policies on which flag flies on which day. This is another sign the SNP government is only interested in representing the dwindling band of voters who share their obsession with independence and flags. Just over four years ago, the people of Scotland voted to stay part of the UK, with its Union Jack flag and all and it's time Nicola Sturgeon finally came to terms with it rather than wasting her time on the dog-whistle politics of nationalism. The Scottish Government sets a policy on the use of flags for its own offices as well as its executive agencies and associated departments. Other public bodies, including Quangos and councils, can also choose whether to follow the guidance, and many do so. Until this month, the rules stated that the Union flag should always be flown on 15 specific days a year, including the Queen's birthday and the O. Oh. 